Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Dancing for Growth Corner. Diana T. Gordon here, and thank you for supporting and joining me and staying too. Go ahead if you haven't already done so. Subscribe, like, and comment if you are inspired. Stay tuned. Diana D. Williams here and welcome to Death and for Growth Corners. For all of my former YouTube members, thank you for coming back. You've been inspired and you are continually to stay tuned and support. I appreciate it for you coming back. And for my new members, come on, let's come on, let's welcome each other and continue to support each other and staying in tune. So also don't want to forget subscribe, like, and comment, and hit that notification bell for further incoming videos so you are informed when something new comes up. So, here we are, and I just wanted to tune in into a very important topic. And I also wanted to point out that I am a licensed professional therapist, and on here, sometimes I am talking about uh, different reviews on certain products or doing DIYs and also my wine bottle. But today, just wanted to kind of change the topic a little bit on mental health. So we are wanting to talk about the importance of mental health. Sometimes it is not always talked about. It is always put under the rug or sometimes we just want to reach back up and talk about the aspects of mental health. And one of the most important aspects I want to look into and discuss if you want to also be a part of in it is talking about the stigmas of mental health and the African American community. Uh, last month, I know it was Black History Month. So I also want to continue to raise the awareness of Black history every month, celebrating it three, 365 days and it's every month. Let's make Black History every month. So that's why it may be a little late that I'm bringing up this topic, but because it relates to mental health, that is never, we should not leave that out just for one month. We're still gonna talk about it all the time. Raise awareness, talk about the importance of it. So that is one of the things that I wanna bring up and especially because I just did a presentation, a virtual presentation to IG. Um, students that were part of a community college and I was on a panel they talking about the six months of mental health so I will show like some of my PowerPoint throughout the video on discussing some of the stigmas the barriers and what we can do better to take care better of our mental health not just the physical but we got to do better mental health as well then let's start putting our mental health as a priority so definitely we're gonna get into it stay tuned As you can see, this is uh, the presentation for uh, Black History Month. It was for um, about the conversations on mental health, the stigma of mental health in the African American community. So I was one of the panelists uh, for the St. Louis Community College of Forest Park, speaking to all of our youth and um, speaking to some of the guests. We had public, the public community come out, friends and family. Uh, so it was a really nice presentation and a very awesome dialogue. So I'm going to let you hear a few things that I had to present on the panel, uh, on the conversation about mental health in the African-American communities. So it was a, it was a Zoom a virtual presentation, and it was pretty much um, started at two o'clock on a Tuesday. So I had some of my friends or family come online and I had a few guests. So 
just go ahead and listen to some of the dialogue um, that I had to share. And we also had some other guest speakers from the counseling department at the St. Louis Community College as far as Park Light guidance, guidance counselors that were present. And get started. Once again, today I have the honor and pleasure of introducing our guest speaker, Ms. Diana D. Williams. Diana D. Williams is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Missouri. She was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. In 2007, she received her Bachelor of Arts in Psychology at Webster University. In 2011, she received her graduate degree, a Master's of Arts in Counseling from Webster University, as well as obtaining her professional counseling licensure in 2014. She is the founder slash owner of her new private practice, Destined for Growth Counseling, LLC, as you can see on her shirt which was launched September of 2020 and under the private practice group Sonder Mind Network, which she is a part-time therapist and is accepting new client referrals. She is a full-time therapist for local behavioral health clinic, Amanda Luckett Murphy Hopewell Center Children's Department, where she has served for nine years. Her background includes diverse experience in nonprofit organization, school-based programs, psychiatric and outpatient behavioral health settings, she has nine years of experience in providing individual group counseling, clinical assessed care, assessment screening to children, youth, adults, and families, as well as a community outreach who collaborate with psychiatric, um, among other community partners to provide mental health resources to young and risk populations. Her philosophy is, as a therapist, I believe in helping individuals explore their inner thoughts, feelings, behaviors behind their significant life changes, as well, challenges, I'm sorry, as well as help him or her move towards self-achievement and self-growth. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to some and introduce to others, none other than Miss Diana D. Hi. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hi. <laughs> and good afternoon uh, on this beautiful snowy day. Um, so, my name is Diana D. Williams. So, what is mental health? Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, uh, because sometimes we know about it, but then we don't really hear about it too much. We don't really talk about it in our African-American community. So we're going to spark up these conversations so we can be able to recognize the signs and the symptoms of the mental illness in African-American women and men. So mental health, it includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It also, there are factors that contribute to mental health. It's our brain, our genes, uh, all of those things that make up in our life experiences, such as uh, some people that go through different traumatic experiences like sexual abuse, physical abuse, or family history of mental problems. Next slide. We're going to look at the prevalence and the senses. So we're gonna start off looking at some numbers and statistics. So black and African American people living below poverty are twice as likely to report serious psychological distress than those living two times over the poverty level. Um, I'm skipping below that. Blacks and African Americans are less likely than white people to die from suicide at all ages. However, Black and African American teenagers are more likely to attempt, meaning attempt, meaning they're not as going to actually do it, but the attempt, the plan, they're more likely to attempt the suicide than white teenagers. It, it says 9.8% versus 6.1%, and that is by the Mental Health Association. And um, going into the next slide. So more on the census, uh, looking at some of the research, and looking at some of the numbers because this is from 2019 the graph that says substance use disorder and it's associated with suicidal thoughts plans and attempts among african-american adults are over the age of 18 but it's looking at some of those increasing numbers of using substance abuse abusing alcohol sometimes it can be related to certain things and sometimes with that the substance use disorder is can lead you to depression. Um, and sometimes with that is associated with suicidal thoughts, but there's an increase in some of our uh, older young adults uh, who have used substance abuse and they're associated with suicidal thoughts. It says that despite rates being less than overall in the US population, major depressive episodes increase 
from 9 per thick, 10.3 percent in black and African American youth ages to 12 to 17, 6.1 percent to 9.4 percent in young adults, the 18 to 24, 25 year old brackets, 5.7 percent to 6.3 percent in the 26 to 49 age range. So it's a little bit more of an increase in the ages of 18 to 25. So just looking at that and the percentage of blacks and it's like higher than the white population, probably like why, you know, but it's just because it kind of goes back to the historical, and we're going to get into that. It goes back to the historical on black and African American experience in America that continues still today, that continues to be an impact on our emotional and the mental health of youth and adults. That the historical dehumanist mind, dehumanization, the oppression, the violence against Black and African American people that have evolved into this present day, that still we're cultivating that mistrust. Sometimes we do have a mistrust in wanting to go to healthcare services or mistrust of other people, of other races. So sometimes it kind of goes back into that whole historical piece, and we're going to get into that as well. We're afraid to talk about it. Why are we afraid to talk about mental health? And one of our pinpoints is stigma. So when you think about stigma, sometimes there's a lot of definition to it, but stigma is when someone views you in a negative way and the stereotype, the negative stereotype. So you think about like, for instance, you're that someone or an individual who feels like, okay, I need some help because I cannot handle this anger. I'm always stressed out or I'm seeing things that that are not there, or I just don't know who to talk to. Sometimes when we go to our friends or our family, sometimes you're, you know, maybe you have a sibling or maybe you have an aunt, uncle or somebody in your family says, really, why do you feel like that? And then, but it just depends on the value of your family, where you come from, how you're raised, because everybody has different beliefs about everything. And sometimes we may not talk about it to our family or our friends because of their stereotype about those different topics. So that's what the stigma is. And sometimes we may hear those related statements that are in a box that says, keep it in the family. What goes on in the family stays in the family. Don't talk about that to your friends. Don't talk that about the peanut head or Keisha or whoever, what, you know. So sometimes they'll like say, no, you need to keep that to yourself. But it just depends on where you come from and how you're raised. And sometimes people say, that's not for my side of the family. No, no, schizophrenia, no, that does not run in, that, in our family. Or some people will always use that phrase, you go to hell. That's crazy. Or you need to go to church. You need to go to Jesus. Don't be trying to go to those shrinks or therapists. You need to go to Jesus or talk to, go to church. Not that that's a problem and that's, you know, uh, to fall out from my church faith of, you know, outreach. Because I am, you know, I am a Christian woman. I believe in God and I believe in, you know, my faith. And I think that we all have different values and beliefs and what, you know, what we need to help any, any type of situation with ourselves. So not to say to fall away from it, but I think when we use those statements, we're only just, normalizing one thing and not really being open to other resources. So I'm not going to stay on this too much, but this is pretty much like a snapshot of the percentages of the rates of like what we're seeing in the U.S. population is 13.4% of the U.S. population identifies as black and African American. It is of that 16% is reported having a mental illness in the past year. And then the other one says mental health and African Americans. That's just a snapshot of that, looking at the barriers of why there is a reception about the mental health services, the distrust in the medical field, the poverty and economic factors, the access to services. We're looking at that 63% of African Americans believe that depression is the personal sign of weakness. We're going to get into talking about that. Um, that's pretty much still a stigma. 
And the other part says 56% of African Americans believe that depression is a normal sign of aging. So we're going to get about some of those related topics still on the stigma. Because when we're talking about that part where it says depression is a personal sign of weakness, sometimes that same stigma is being looked at because we're always being told, are oh, you a strong black man? You're a strong sister. Sometimes we use that term, and that's okay. But I think that it just kind of clouds over that because it doesn't allow us to be fragile. So when people say, okay, you know, I'm not able to think, or I'm not okay, or I'm feeling really down and depressed, and then sometimes your friends or family may say, oh, that's weak. Like, you're not, you know, you're supposed to be strong, you know, but we'll get into more of that conversation and what that relates. But sometimes in your in the community, maybe your friends or your family, sometimes it's, depression is seen as weakness. So sometimes in the mental health field. So next slide. So barriers to mental health is we're looking at still going on today. It has happened years ago, uh, but there is a lack of access to psychiatric care. Sometimes families that don't have, you know, maybe they don't have the resource or they don't have enough uh, education in knowing what's out there. Um, the lack of proper screening tools, and that is if you know we're being told to get diagnosed somewhere or we want to be screened for something like ADHD or bipolar or depression, and if we go to, uh, we're not knowing where to go to. Sometimes we may go to the wrong doctor, wrong psychiatrist, or they may mis misdiagnose, and we've seen that a lot sometimes. Yeah. The lack of sorted, supported education. Uh, the lack of insurance. So that's a big one. Uh, a lot of times I've seen uh, with families, especially in our culture, where sometimes we don't always have ways to afford insurance. And it becomes a little hard. It becomes a struggle in that area. But with us talking about it, we're going to talk about how do we obtain those services even if we don't, if even if we can't afford it, um, because it is out there now. I feel like there is an increase from last year, 2019, to now. They have been offering more free counseling services. I know for the YWCA, that's something you can put on note. And I do want to say that if you got a pen and paper, or you want to write and jot some notes down, this is the time to do it too. But the YWCA. They're offering five free counseling services. If you're not able to afford those services as well, because I know that with some insurance companies, they may only have a certain amount of benefit on your insurance, and sometimes they don't cover that mental health part. I just pretty much found that out. And um, it's just to pretty much know, but what I've been telling some of my clients is call your insurance company and find out what benefits do you have? Because sometimes when they come to these uh, sessions, they, they're not aware of it. But it's good that if you have a really good relationship, if you are seeing a therapist, or you want to see a therapist or any other services, that it's good to just talk to your insurance company. See what you need on that benefit. Because it's very important. Because sometimes they're not going to tell you. You're going to be so blindsided you may not know. So and sometimes with people that can't afford the insurance, but for kids, sometimes um, the Medicaid, if you are, if they are on Medicaid, that will also be a benefit to obtaining therapy services as well. What is trauma? That's very, very hot topic. So what is trauma? Trauma is the response to a deeply distressing or disturbing event that overwhelms the individual's ability to cope, cause feelings of hopelessness, diminishes their self, sense of self, and their ability to feel a full range of emotion and experiences. And I look at trauma as it's a shock. It's a threatening life event that has disrupted my well-being. So something that is being really, um, that 
change. So something that hasn't happened in my life at all, and then when something new happens that really threatening my, you know, well-being mindset, I'm not used to this. That really puts a toll on what I'm thinking, how I'm living. It changes everything around me and my family. So next slide. PTS hear this a lot. It's post-stress traumatic disorder. And this is just a graph on the symptoms of PTSD. It's basically after that shocking, threatening event happens in your life, that it either is going to be long-term or it's going to be short-term symptoms. So if it hadn't really affected you mentally at all, then it's acute, but if it has affected you, it's just a snippet, a little trailer, just for you to be inspired and look at how PTSD is played in the movie. So we're going to go ahead and play this too many clip, but it's just basically showing how he went, Derek Luke, which is the patient, went to, back to his mom who abandoned him and went through, he went through the abandonment of neglect because I think she went through substance abuse, neglect, and he went into a foster home. So she pretty much uh, left him and he went into a foster home. But you will see some of these issues why when he went into the Navy, he still had hurt, anger, and he needed that help as he was growing older. So he went to the therapist or the psychiatrist, which was Denzel Washington, um, and he had to confront all of that. He had to challenge what was going on. And in that, he felt like, okay, I need to, if I need to heal, I need to go back to where it all started, which is his mom. And sometimes it'll take you there. So this little clip will show you him talking to his mom. Go ahead. So on Antoine Fisher, if you haven't seen it, go ahead, check it out. It did bring a lot of uh, points about psychological trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, and African-American men and women, the aspect of it. Then the trauma talk in our black community, it was just a historical standpoint I wanted to talk about in the presentation because some things we do not know. It was talking about how can trauma be brought up in our African-American community. Going back to enslavement, 1619 to 1865, where there was a lot of different things going on, sexual abuse, physical abuse, institutionalized racism, mass lynching. And then one of the slave owners, Samuel Cartwright, brought off this whole diagnosis called dropomania. It was a diagnosis he was giving African-American women or men who were runaway slaves. I know, shocking, right? So that was just something we were trying to learn about the historical standpoint of how trauma can be brought up in our African-American community. And then the next thing we see also transgender generational trauma, where it refers to trauma that passes through generations. And those symptoms, it can, it doesn't, it's always usually what they say, generational curses, it doesn't always necessarily mean it could be passed on unless the cycle stops. The adverse trauma, which is the societal experience, they call it adverse childhood experience. Types of trauma, we have acute trauma, chronic trauma, complex trauma, Complex trauma is more like a collective of trauma. Then I was talking about the race-based trauma, and that was the very important piece because we were looking at the race-based traumatic thing that sometimes we collectively see and witness as a community that still is traumatizing to us as a community, and sometimes we tend to normalize these things and continue to feel that. And as a collective, that sometimes we can be traumatized through that. Coming up to COVID-19, that pandemic that we experienced, that is a collective uh, and it's a, still a stressor and still today. So it's just kind of going in a graph about young black adults experiencing more COVID stressors than their adults. Then I was going into talking about the pandemic stressors among our African-American community. What it looks like to say we are not okay when we are dealing with depression and anxiety. So it talks about what depression and anxiety is together. Then I was pointing out topics on the mental health crisis among children, adolescents, and the things that we experienced during the pandemic. Then I also brought up how mental health illnesses can impact and increase our existing medical problems. Heart disease, um, it can have blood pressure. So it's just different things we talked about. Now maintaining positivity I always say mental health is wealth. 
So I was just reaching out and talking about certain things that you can do to practice your self-care, make sure that you are putting your mental health first. So I was bringing up a lot of different resources and what we can do to make sure that we're not burnt out and that we are taking care of our mental health. Choose your joy. And that's what I went into talking about all the self-care acts. I left the self-care list. I left some therapist resource and directory where if you are interested in seeking a mental health professional or um, anyone that you want to talk to or go to a, a group support team, there were so many resources that I left. This one, this slide that I'm going into is talking about the Black History Month re re resorting to the Black Pioneers in mental health. So we do have a lot of Black Pioneers that contributed to giving us all the resources that we need about mental health. Then I left a lot of different resources to where we can obtain free counseling services, where to go and how to be able to reach out to these type of health care, mental health care resources. The last thing is leaving them to questions. Um, we did have a real good grade of questions. They were very absolutely um, inspired to just hear young people talk about how important mental health is, and especially in our African-American community. So it was very nice to be a panelist for the, the uh, St. Louis Community College at Forest Park. So that is my ending in that presentation. And we left off with a lot of good questions, a lot of things that people can leave with understanding mental health as well. And I hope that you take care of your mental health and especially as far as our physical and spiritual. It's so important today that we understand about our mental health and what we can do to practice self-care, choose our joy, choose a way to live and be healthy. So that is it. And thank you for enjoying this slide. I didn't get a chance to get the video, but I did want to kind of go through and pull up the power slides, the PowerPoint slides that I did have. So that way you can get the information. So some of it will be uh, presented in my YouTube content. I will leave uh, some resources below in my um, description. So you can go to these resources if you need to get, maybe reach out to a mental health professional or get some other resources for your mental health and be able to practice um, getting those information. So I will leave some resources for a therapist directive and also some self-care apps to be able to better take care of our mental health. Let's go. Let's, let's be safe. Let's better take care of our mental health. Thank you for tuning in and joining me on this very awesome presentation. I had a lot of great feedback, um, a lot of praise for, you know, doing really well and being an advocate for um, our mental health in the African American community. So I just wanted to put it out there, even though I'm a late, but just wanted to throw that out there and get us empowered and aware that our mental health is well. Stay tuned.